What's going on today, everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. I got another mod going on the old Subaru here. It's something that I should have probably done a long time ago, but I didn't. We're here now. We're going to do it. Might as well get to it. So I've got myself a new blow-off valve. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this factory unit and go ahead and put in a new aftermarket and hopefully get a little bit better throttle response out of it and probably have the nice turbo noises. You always love those turbo noises. So let's get to it. Put this GFB um, blow-off valve, blow-pass valve, however you want to set it. It's a recirculating one or it can be set to do atmosphere. It has a bunch of adjustments in it, so we can set it up however we want. I don't want it all the time, but I want it when I want it. So, we'll get to it. So here we go. This is it. This is the factory unit that we need to replace. So we need to get this, this tube off, these two 12s off here, and then we actually need to take this elbow off, it's held down by two screws, and put it on the new one. And that's connected into this hose. So hopefully we can get it off. We might need to take this intercooler out. Not out, but pushed back. Get it out of the way a little bit more so we can get to this big hose clamp. Because it doesn't look like we might be able to get in there. But we're going to go ahead and give that a shot. Take it apart and get to it. Now I would love to show you the before of what the blow-off valve sounds like. But it doesn't sound like anything. It just pushes air back into the intake and you don't hear anything. So, you wouldn't really hear anything anyways. If you want to know what it sounds like, it sounds like your car. Most likely. If you don't have a blow off valve, you have a blow past valve, then it's going to sound the same. Now, a blow off valve and a blow past valve are the same, but different. So, B-O-V, blow off valve will vent to atmosphere that lets air out of the out of the system so you're already metered that air and now you're letting it out into the atmosphere out into the hood of the car basically and then there's a BOP blow or BPV blow pass valve and that goes through the valve and recirculates back into the car already metered air so your car's already accounted for it there's advantages and disadvantages of both. Either way, an aftermarket one has better springs, better, they're just built better and they're built more rugged so they'll actually last a lot longer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get a 12 millimeter, probably some needle nose pliers. And I think this kit comes with new bolts so we'll have to check that out. So. We'll go ahead, open up this box, see what we need, and go ahead and get that taken off. So it looks like we are going to need some extra hardware, but luckily the hardware is here and the tool, Allen key, pretty common, but it is actually here. So we don't need anything other than our new Allen key and then the 12 millimeter that we need to take that off and some needle nose pliers. Here we go, we've got everything out now. You want to be very, very careful not to scratch this surface up because this is your sealing surface. I managed to go ahead and got a little bit of scratch on it, but that's well within the gasket area and it's only just the corner, so it's not the end of the world. Um, but this mating surface is all nice and clean, so we don't really have any problems there, so that's neat. So there's the two next to each other. Here's your factory and here's your new one. You can kind of tell from the bottom, the one's got a lot bigger piston than the other one. 
Now we need to go ahead and remove this elbow and put it on this side of our blow off valve. Got all three pieces taken apart. This actually has a gasket on it, so make sure your gasket is clean, your both surfaces are nice and clean, then we'll go ahead and install it on our new one. There we go. Old one taken apart, new one all put together. Now this has a couple little cool features. It's got this ring right here that actually moves. And then you've got your spring response right here, your preload. So this ring that's right here will move and it actually closes and opens this flute and lets you know how much to recirculate and how much to bypass. So right there with that fully closed, that's fully 100% recirculating. And then with it all the way open, it's all the way atmosphere, bending the atmosphere. I don't want to have a whole bunch, so I'm going to go meh, about right there to start, see where I like it, and I can always adjust this on the car later because this will be facing up like this, and I'll be able to get to this ring and this spring. So we'll go through and put this in. First thing I noticed, though, is that I'm not going to be able to get a bolt in there past that trumpet. So we'll go ahead remove the trumpet so now we can get our bolts in there go ahead put our bolts in another cool thing about this is it actually has an o-ring on the bottom now this one requires a gasket to go uh, put this one back on and i actually ordered a ring but or a gasket but this one comes with an o-ring to seal it so this one does not need a gasket because this o-ring will be sealing on the car one thing that's going to make it easier is if you have this ring locked in the open position. So there's two hooks back here, and if you get it just right, you can actually hook this on, and that leaves the ring open. It'll make it easier for pulling back up when we go to install the blow-off valve. Definitely be careful when you're putting that thing on, because... If you lose your bolts, they go way down into the abyss down there. That's not good. Now I gotta get that thing out of there. And it's deep. That ain't good. We've got our new one installed, hoses hooked up on both sides, tightened down, the flute back on, and now the Allen wrench that they give you actually controls this middle, your spring preload. So it actually has, as your spring preload, you can add or subtract your spring preload that will let it come out more with more force or less force. Now it's always encouraged to go and get a tune after you install something new on your car, especially Subarus. Uh, with this one, it's I'm gonna put it to probably 100% recirculating, so it's acting like the original blow off valve, um, and we'll see how it works out. Now, I am gonna go get this tuned soon, so it's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna be pushing it super hard. I am, however, going to go ahead and reflash the car or remap the car because it's always a good idea to set your parameters back to zero. When you put something new on, the car can learn a little bit better because right now it thinks it has the old one on. So the new one might will have better response. So the car can account for a little bit of the extra that's going to come with this new part. So we're gonna go ahead and reflash it real quick start the car up, let it idle, get it warm, and then double check, make sure that everything's working out good, and it's how we want it, because a lot of it is the idle. So the spring preload is what you wanna set for your idle. And then the atmosphere is if you wanna put it to 
back to the car or if you want to vent it to atmosphere and get rid of it. So we're going to go ahead, retune the car, and then reflash the car, and then tune up the blow off valve. While it is cool to have it go off every time you let off the throttle, I don't want it to do that. I want it to be a little bit more at the top or end of stuff where it won't happen all the time. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this screw down just a little bit and go from there. So we've gone ahead and we've got our screw set in there and you want to set your screw you start off with the softest and work your way down and what you want to do is you want to have someone help you if you have an electronic throttle body like me or if you have a cable driven you can just blip it yourself but start off at your softest setting with your idle or your screw preload and slowly work your way in turn in time somewhere in there and you want your the piston to not open when you're close, when it's um, you'll blip your throttle and it'll you'll see it move a little bit, and you want it to drop back down before it drops down to idle. So the goal is to get that piston pushed back down before you reach your idle. Now that's going to help with it backfiring and not running right, or if you pull up to a stoplight, you're having troubles where it's dying on you or wanting to really die on you, your blow-off valve isn't set correct. Your blow-off valve is still open and is recirculating that air and not allowing that air to get into the engine. So you need to set that to where you'll blip the throttle, get it up to like two and a half, three thousand, blip it, come back down, and you want that piston in your blow-off valve to stop or be seated again before your engine reaches its idle, which is like 800 uh, RPM. So that's the goal right there. You go around. I just took it for a drive on the back roads. You just drive around, see if it's doing it. You'll go, you'll put it in a gear. You'll go boost a little bit, come it off, and let, put your clutch in and keep it in gear. But push your clutch in and let it drop back down to idle. See if it goes down and will blip and die on you. Or if it will actually keep, like, bring it back up, keep going. You want it to come down, idle, and not drop down and come back up you want to just come down idle be done so get that dialed in and then once you do that it's kind of user preference if you want it a little bit harder i wanted it a little bit on the harder side so 
when I was driving around town, it wouldn't go off. But if I get into some boost, like I think it's about five, six pounds, it will actually start to atmosphere. It'll vent to atmosphere. But when I'm just cruising and vacuum, don't even hit boost, I don't want it to vac or want don't want it to vent for me personally. Some people do. I don't I didn't want to have that do do it that way. I want it when I'm on it, I want it to vent because that's when I'm doing my spirited driving. That's when I need my throttle to drop back down. Hopefully that helps. It's kind of a lot to explain. If it's a little bit more than what you're thinking it is, let me know in the comments. Please leave a comment. I'll definitely do a video on how to adjust it. Not a huge problem. Easy enough to do. I just gotta know that you guys need it. So, please leave a comment. If you're sticking around for this long, please subscribe. It helps me out a ton. I'm trying hard to get subscribers right now. Please share. Let your friends know if you have somebody that's in the same boat, needs help, show them this video. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go grab some dinner. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy, everyone. Peace.